You're listening to Think Big, episode 30, and the first in season two. Hello, big thinkers, and welcome to episode 30 of Think Big, English for Architects, the very first episode in season two. I'm your host, Tara Cull, Australian language teacher, coach, and landscape architect, and I'm bringing all these things together to help you to build more outstanding communication skills. If English is your second language and you're an architect, a landscape architect, interior designer, student, or you work in the built environment, then you're in the right place. To find out more about my coaching programs, go to archieenglish.com. And as always, you'll find the free transcript with key vocabulary, grammar points, and expressions at archieenglish.com slash podcast. If you're a fan of architecture news, you'll know that housing affordability has become a key concern for architects and designers around the world. Because after all, we all need a comfortable home to live in, unwind after a long day, and perhaps even raise our kids. But with increasing house prices, interest rates and inflation in many places around the world, this is becoming harder and harder. In today's episode, I'm going to take a closer look at housing affordability and explain what it is, why it matters, and most importantly, what architects and designers can do to become part of the housing affordability movement. Throughout this episode, there might be some unfamiliar words, phrasal verbs, and expressions So make sure you check out the transcript and make note to keep track of new or unfamiliar words. I will go through this vocabulary at the end of the episode. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you may notice that with season two, there's something new. I really wanted an opportunity to make the podcast multimodal. So I wanted to be able to have visual aspects, the audio aspects, and also the transcript. And I wanted to be able to practice my sketch noting skills. So you'll notice that with some of the episodes, I have created some animated videos. You'll find these on the episode page as well as on YouTube. So let's get into today's episode. As I mentioned just a moment ago, housing affordability is a key concern in architecture at the moment. House prices continue to rise and interest rates and inflation are soaring in many parts of the world, partly due to the COVID pandemic. This means that many people are finding it harder than ever to get onto the property ladder, build their dream home or even find a home they can afford for themselves and their families. At the same time, many people decide to go ahead with their renovations or build their dream home only to find that they can't afford the price of an architect, or they just can't do some of the things that professionals can do. All too often they struggle through trying to do it by themselves, despite their lack of architecture skills, or they give up and force themselves to deal with poor living conditions because there simply isn't another option. Architecture has been viewed to be something that only the wealthy can enjoy. As the Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer said, architecture does not change anything. It's always on the side of the wealthy. Even though we might want to deny this, it tends to be true because, as mentioned in 2016, only 2% of all houses in the world are designed by architects. But as Niemeyer added, the important thing is to believe that it can make life better. The problem is architects have the right skills, the experience, the insight and creativity to make housing more affordable for us all. With these astonishing facts in mind, we clearly need to do something about the problem if we are to make a difference in the world and create more affordable housing for us all. So what can we do about it? How do we as architects and designers help democratise architecture and ensure that everyone can afford to live in a home that they can afford. Let's take a closer look. What is housing affordability? 
and why is it important? As architects and designers, it's easy to forget that houses are much more than residential projects. We're designing them for real people with real needs. A house is more than just a building. It's a place individuals and families can return to after a long day, kick back and relax. It's where they create memories with friends and family, where they sleep, read, enjoy their hobbies, and escape from the hustle and bustle of the world. So imagine if you couldn't afford to live somewhere like this, that your home was so expensive that you struggled to pay your rent, mortgage, utility bills, and even other essentials like food, transport, or health. Or that you were forced to settle for poor quality housing, share your space with other families, or feel that your opportunities in life were limited. This is the reality for many families across the world, especially given the current global economic climate. Affordable housing is, as the name suggests, housing that everyone can afford while still having money left over for those other necessities in life, not just making ends meet. Of course, what this means does vary according to the individual and their income level, which is why architects need to focus on improving housing affordability for both low-income families in social housing and those looking to get onto the property ladder or build their dream home. It's not only this. When we create affordable housing, we're having a positive impact on the community itself. Community is so important. We're improving mental health, growing social connections, reducing crime, attracting businesses and promoting economic growth. Families can buy more nutritious foods, afford to send their kids to football club or on school trips, or simply just have a safe place to relax and unwind. But what can architects do to be part of the housing affordability movement with small scale interventions and empowering clients? We can make a difference. As architects, we can become part of the housing affordability movement and ensure that everyone has access to adequate housing and shelter. So how do we do this? Number one, we can start with outstanding design that focuses on the potential needs of the individual, family or community as a whole and includes features that enhance the overall living experience. This could include communal living spaces, access to green space, improved facilities, recycling materials, making houses more energy efficient and using natural light wherever possible, or even upcycling materials. A major key to affordability is the convenience of being able to walk or cycle to get the groceries and other daily necessities. And this is something I love about where I live is that I can walk to the supermarket every single day. By constructing a grocery store, pharmacy and other necessities in the neighbourhood, other needs will follow suit. Something as small as street lights and road signs may seem irrelevant in comparison to construction costs, but they play a role in making the area appear cared for, which adds dignity. And in order for there to be affordable dignity, we need to have visible indications that people care about this place. Number two, we need to incorporate affordable yet high performance materials in our designs that are easy to find. High performance materials are materials that have superior physical and or chemical properties, such as strength, durability and efficiency. Some examples of high performance materials include advanced composites made from timber and steel, nanomaterials and smart materials. These materials can often be used in place of traditional materials to improve the performance or function of a product or structure. But let's not stop there. If you type high performance materials into ArcDaily and you will find many articles discussing high performance materials and standards. And some of these standards include international construction codes, LEED or leadership in energy and design, and well building standards, just to name a few. 
we really need to focus on how we can use materials in better ways. Project teams must identify the high performance attributes they want to work towards and create a project specific definition for high performance design. Number three, we need to break the traditional image of the architect, democratize design and empower users to take part in the building of their own environment. Democratizing design means making it accessible and available to a broader population rather than being limited to a certain elite or privileged group. This can involve changing the traditional design process to include input and participation from a diverse range of individuals and communities, as well as providing resources or education for those without prior design experience. And this could include things like asking users what space they'd like to create and working alongside them to make it happen. Some architects even use open source design sharing to share some of their designs for free, which can then be adapted by the user. In the 1970s, a professor by the name of John F.C. Turner, teaching at a new master's program at MIT called Urban Settlement Design in Developing Countries, developed an idea surrounding the concept that people can build for themselves. And this idea has since evolved, including Alejandro Aravina, who discussed the concept in his TED Talk, My Architectural Philosophy, where he discussed how his firm Elementals proposed a project where they provided half houses with the idea of incremental building. So one side of the house is ready to occupy, while the other side is just a frame around an empty space, waiting to be built out by the occupant incrementally over time. What exactly do affordable housing projects look like? And how can they provide benefits to the community? There are four projects that I want to share with you today that provide us with great examples of how to design cost-effective, user-oriented residential projects. The first is the Designs for Carbon Positive Affordable Housing Project that was created by Cove.Tool, an automated building design platform for daylight, shadow, energy, carbon, HVAC design, and parametric optimization. They offered a $50,000 prize for the best architect to use data-driven design to cut costs, fight climate change, and improve housing stability. There were various submissions from tiny houses to apartment blocks, and each used a range of design creativity, materials, and approaches to create an affordable housing project that could be replicated across the world. I encourage you to check out the different submissions and the ways that they've used high performance materials and the design concepts to combat this challenge that we face. The winner was Somnium London Limited with their innovative ultra low cost carbon positive prototype housing design. Their submission and many others included locally sourced materials, waste recycling, use of commercial space, and also considered transport costs, community safety, and generating opportunities for the local community. The project's design achieves affordable housing that is carbon positive and makes use of recycled, locally available materials. It's a really great example that can be applied to similar climatic and site contexts, allowing for much broader application. The schematics are self-buildable, low cost, and focus on using the surrounding environment to decrease energy use and carbon output. Secondly, we have Cascina Melata, an affordable housing in Milan project by C&S Architects. They created a high-rise village, including public space that connected the two towers to strengthen the identity of the community. Features they added were bike storage, gym, laundry room, and children's playground. And they also added a common room, a unique feature in apartment blocks and designed to promote community cohesion or the bringing together of people. Importantly, the build also focused on sustainability, using appliances with energy class A, geothermal district heating and photovoltaic systems or solar panels to reduce both emissions and consumptions. 
Excitingly, the buildings were designed to offer views of the surrounding green space and used materials that were both durable and recyclable. Next, we have Opod, designed by James Law and Cybertex, based in Hong Kong. Opod is an experimental low-cost social housing project constructed out of low-cost and readily available 2.5 metre diameter concrete water pipes. The objective of the modular home is to ease Hong Kong's affordable housing problems by providing accommodation to citizens of Hong Kong struggling to afford housing. Although conceptual and not much has appeared in the news about it since 2021, other than it being added to the metaverse, it still provides interesting food for thought when it comes to designing affordable living. Lastly, something more recent, the Brink Tower in Amsterdam, designed by Meccano. The residential tower comprises of mixed use with places to live, work and relax in a healthy environment. It is said to create an energy-positive, green and inclusive neighbourhood and contribute to the development of Overhoax in North Amsterdam. The development includes 408 homes, including 266 rental homes in the middle segment, 120 at affordable rent and a residential care facility, combined with a community centre, a communal roof, inner garden and commercial functions such as co-working, a bowling centre with restaurant and various smaller retail and catering venues. Now, of course, there are numerous other projects that I could mention here that go beyond social housing and expand into tiny houses, van conversions, and even self-build projects. If you're interested to see the innovation and creativity at work across architecture for housing affordability, I encourage you to search online for further inspiration. Never Too Small is one of my favorite YouTube channels for finding inspiration for tiny houses and affordable living. We've reached the end of this episode, so before we get into vocabulary and grammar explanation, let's quickly recap housing affordability, why it's so important, and what we can do as architects to create a better, more affordable, and more sustainable future for us all. This is just one of the many topics I like to use with my clients and students to help them build vocabulary and fluency. Firstly, residential buildings are much more than places where people live. They provide shelter, a place to escape from the chaos of everyday life, to bond with family and friends, and to indulge in our hobbies. However, rising house prices, inflation, and the hike in interest rates across the world mean that many people cannot live in comfortable conditions and struggle to afford the necessities in life. Even if they're on a higher income, they may have to sacrifice their dreams because they simply can't afford the essential skills of an architect. Secondly, we can make a difference as architects by using cutting edge design tools, including durable, affordable and sustainable materials and seeking feedback from those who will actually live in these properties. Together, we can ensure that everyone has access to comfortable housing that provides them with the opportunities they need to thrive as human beings. Before we wrap up today's episode, let's go through some of the vocabulary from the episode. You'll find the list of key vocabulary in the transcript and show notes, and I encourage you to write down anything else that you find in this episode. I'm going to go through the vocabulary in order of it coming up in the episode. So the first ones we're going to look at are idioms and phrases. And the first one was all too often. All too often is another way of saying frequently or too frequently. So for example, all too often we see this problem or frequently we see this problem. The next one is follow suit, which means to conform to another one's actions. And then lastly, we have making ends meet, which means to earn just enough money to live on. So obviously when you're living in a house that is affordable, you're not just making ends meet, you're also able to afford other things as well. The episode also had a few phrasal verbs. So to give up, which means to say, I can't do this anymore, means to stop. To kick back, so 
in the episode we were talking about sitting on the couch and kicking back and relaxing, which means to relax. The next one, built out or to build something out, which means the growth or the development or expansion of something. And then finally, to check out, which means to inspect or to look at something. Now let's go through some of the key content words. Inflation, which is a noun that means a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing of money. To democratize something, a verb, which means to make something accessible to everyone. The hustle and bustle, which is a noun, which means a large amount of activity and work, which is usually in a noisy surrounding. And as I'm speaking now, there's a lot of hustle and bustle happening outside my window with people beeping their horns. The next one, social housing. So social housing is housing that is provided for people on low incomes or with particular needs by the government or non-profit organizations. The property ladder. This is a noun of a series of ascending stages where people are perceived to progress as they are able to buy more expensive houses. Adequate, which means satisfactory or acceptable. And sometimes we can talk about adequate being the bare minimum. So you're not getting anything fancy. It's just enough. Communal living spaces. These are shared living spaces. So you might have a communal living space in a, a tower, for example, where you can all use the, the green roof. Um, the next one is open source design. Now this is a type of design artifact. So it could be a library, a design, or something that is published under an open source license, which means that it's available freely for people to download and to use, and they can use the source files and they can modify them if they want to. Next, we have incremental, which is the adjective, which means something to do something step by step. And then if we talk about the doing of it or the adverb, it's incrementally step by step. A prototype, this is a preliminary version of something. Carbon positive. The carbon positive is interesting because this goes beyond achieving net zero where emissions and reducing those emissions are equal. Carbon positive goes beyond that to make sure that it removes additional carbon dioxide from the air. Next, we have cohesion, which is the forming or uniting of a a lot of things to form a whole. The next one is a price hike. A price hike is a noun to suggest that something has increased. So the cost of housing has increased. There has been a price hike. So this is a noun. And then the last one, cutting edge, which is the latest or most advanced stage in the development of something. That brings us to the end of the episode. As always, thanks for listening to Think Big English for Architects. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to subscribe for more English tips for architects and share with somebody else who might find it useful. Remember that you can also find the free podcast transcript with key vocabulary and useful expressions at archieenglish.com slash podcast. Until next time, 